really and you know and i really i really enjoy you know when i can share my my experience and especially in healthcare because healthcare is such an important but as well but also complicated and complex topic at the same time uh, and I'm really super excited to see also that like you know, like those initiatives uh, that are at the uh, that you are doing at Civita and all all of you that are somehow uh, contributing and coming up also with the solutions. Um, the title of this, or maybe maybe before I start, because usually I tend to make the the slides more visual and less text. I have decided to do it the other way around uh, today, so it's going to be a little more text that you that you will see. Um, you will not have to read it. You will not have to probably take notes because everything is going to be on the slides. The purpose of why I have decided to do it like this is that you can refer to those slides also later. Because if it was mostly visual, you would have to go to, to a recording or take notes, but I would rather have you, you know, to, to listen, not thinking about is this the note or do I need to take a screenshot or, or something. Uh, the, the slides will be available to you and most should be most should be there um and i mean paula as i as i mentioned like you you mentioned everything uh i have been with right now i'm with my sugar i have been with the company since 2018 my sugar was a startup that started i think in 2011 or 2012 uh, in Vienna, with as you can see there on my back, with a goal to make diabetes uh, success. Uh, two founders out of four uh, have uh, diabetes, and the company was acquired by Roche in 2017. Uh, and you know, and since then we have been working on many, many, many amazing things. Um, I would say probably the one that I'm the proudest of is something that we actually launched uh last month uh is i don't know how much you know diabetes but there are for for the patients that there are insulin pumps uh that they have attached on their body that that inject insulin as needed and we launched and, and this insulin pump can be can be controlled directly or you have external controllers and now you can we we have integrated this pump one of, one of the Roche's pumps with our app. So it means that the people do not have to carry around additional controller for the pump, but can, can do it directly from, from the MySugar app. Uh, before MySugar, I spent five years uh, running uh, Mentigram, which was a startup that I co-founded. It was in mental health and our goal was to digitize uh, or and improve the efficiency and productivity of the, of the mental health care in general. And also since 2017 i can use the title book author uh because during mentigram especially when the times when, when times when it didn't go too well and i was feeling a little down i started writing down and putting my notes and experiences uh, together as uh, some kind of internal therapy and then i realized that, oh like this is enough content and everything to, uh, to make it a book uh so then with the help of my wife and a few of the mentors and reviewers that I had, I I, I wrote it down and and it and it ended up as a nice and short book, maybe four or five hours of read for someone who is not super fast fast reader. So maybe the first and only self promo definitely. The, I think that if you are in early stages of startups, it's worth it's worth checking the book. Okay, but as I said, it's about you. And what are we going to talk about today? Uh, first, I will start talking about I will talk about the customer segmentation because this is a big challenge in healthcare because healthcare as an industry is extremely complex, ex extremely and extremely complicated. And before we do and talk about everything else, really understanding who the customers are is the foundation of all the other work. Once we understand who are the customers. Uh, then we will talk about how to create and create and build value for those for those customers. There, I will go through. I will explain it to you on the value proposition canvas. That is a tool. I would say like pretty generic for this and the most usual tool 
that is used for identifying the value proposition. Uh, then in the first step, I will, will talk about uh, validation and how you can validate or what is a good validation for your uh, for your solutions and then in the end because it's not going to be only me talking then in the end we will have a small exercise or a workshop or we can call it like that where you will go use what we have what, what i show you what i talk about what i will talk about and put it into practice because i think that it's like the, we are planning for the last part around 20 minutes and i think that it's going to be much better than me talking for 20 minutes longer uh regarding the questions uh like some of you who joined earlier you you, you could hear that Paul and i were figuring out how to do the questions the best uh please if you have any questions i could type them in the chat directly uh it would be the it would be the best however if you see that i missed uh the question and it's really for, important for you to Get the answer at at the time. Uh, feel free to unmute yourself and simply you know, jump in and ask the question. Uh, so, and with that, I think we can start. Uh, customer segmentation, and we'll start pretty easily because you know what most of us know is that a user is a customer. What it means, someone who uses a solution also pays for it. And this goes outside, of course, this is not the case only for, for the healthcare, but for everything else. Whether you go to a supermarket, you know, you buy, a, I don't know, milk or, or oranges, you also pay for, pay for them. You are the user, you are the customer. The relationship between, between a seller and a customer is very, very direct, very straightforward. In healthcare, those users are often and most often the patients, of course, but for certain business models or certain solutions, it could be also the, the doctors or health, healthcare professionals or other medical staff. Usually this simple relationship is with the lifestyle and wellness apps. Uh, I guess that I would say that most of you know the 23 and me DNA test, for example, or different fitness or meditation apps that have subscriptions like uh, Calm or Headspace or different, you know, like workout uh, apps that help you get get into shape. But also, uh, from my perspective, into this segment, uh, there there are also the office management so softwares for the small doctor practices. So not the big hospitals, but the ones where the doctor is also an owner of their small, usually private office, and they need some software to manage the office, you know, to manage the appointments, patient records and everything. So the doctor, since he's the owner of the office, also has to pay for the solution as well as use it. Um, the much more interesting part from my perspective, but also much more difficult part is where the users are not the customers. With that, I mean that the users really using the solution are not the ones who are paying for it. And most or many more complex healthcare solutions will work like this because the ones who pay for the solutions are usually the insurance companies. And why is that? Uh, in general, no matter what, how would you specify or how most of you could specify the value proposition that you have, the ultimate goal for you is to have healthier population. You know, like in this case, you are addressing COVID. Uh, you want to support people from, you know, from, from different angles with the ultimate goal of making those people healthier. Um, and, you know, and in most countries, the people are not used to pay for healthcare out of their own pocket, definitely not in, definitely not, not in Europe. So it means that someone else comes in who pays for healthcare and it's usually health insurance and the health insurance companies. And the healthy pop population means different things for different stakeholders in healthcare. For the insurance companies or for the payers, of course, it means lower costs of healthcare. And however uh, rash or uh, rough it sounds, this is their main goal. That they need to they need to reduce the healthcare costs because healthcare is becoming very very costly. But of course, not 
they do not want to lower it uh, by providing worse care, but by making people healthier and therefore not needing that many care. For the doctors, for example, healthier population means easier life for them, you know, not crowded waiting rooms, not very long waiting times for surgeries or for the appointments. And of course, for the people, if they are healthier, they are happier, they have higher quality of life. So with, with this, you can see that it gets quite complex, um, quite complicated and understanding how to work and how to exist in those might be uh, a little a little challenging. Um, so based on the what I based on the previous, I would identify four typical stakeholders that you might be exposed to in healthcare. Of course, the, the first ones that usually come on the mind are the patients. Patients are the people who either who want to either prevent or uh, some future health issues or address their existing ones. Uh, the second stakeholders are the healthcare professionals, which are actually the doctors and our staff providing care to those patients. So helping them either prevent or address the health issues. Then you have, then there are the institutions uh, and by the institutions, I mean, special, I mean, organizations such as hospitals or clinics that are um, that organize the healthcare professionals to provide more efficient care uh, to, to those um, to those patients they need to run early you know efficient also efficient operations while providing those services so you know so uh, I mean for also for the hospital it's more of a business uh, the hospital management is not there to provide the care for them. It's to ensure that the, that the hospital is efficient, productive, that it runs smoothly. And then the, the doctors that work in the hospital are the ones providing care to, to the patient. And then the last stakeholder that I mentioned uh, are the payers or in Europe, it's mostly mostly the health insurance companies depends on the model. Like there, there, there are countries with only one a health insurance company that is usually like public. Uh, in some other countries, you have public health insurance as well as, as, well as uh, private health insurance. And those are the organizations ultimately paying for the service. Uh, and their goal is to have healthier population. If you could think of any other stakeholder uh, in healthcare, please type type those or your thoughts, your ideas in chat. And then if we have some time in the end, we can, uh, you know, we can talk about it because really it's really super important that you understand what, who are the segments, what are the value propositions, uh, what is the value proposition for them, what are the problems that each of them is, uh, is solving and facing. Um, and, hmm. The tricky part is that when I go back to those four stake to those four typical stakeholders, you know, as I mentioned, you may not interact only with one. You may interact with one if if you have a more simple solution. But in general, you can interact with kind of like any combinations of of these four. And in the beginning, it does not have to be fully clear. Uh, for example, for example, with with Menchgram, Initially, we were thinking that we would focus only on the on the mental health professionals, so it's mostly psychologists uh, uh, and potentially potentially psychiatrists. But soon we realized that you know they are not the only stakeholders because it, with our solution we had to build a part that is user friendly enough also for the patient. As we were working on the business, we understood that we would like actually someone else to pay for it because the because the psychologist did not want to also as a, did not want to pay for for the solutions for the solution out of their out of their pocket and it took us really quite some time and we learned it the, the hard way who are the stakeholders what are their motives and what are their incentives in you know within within the whole i would say within the whole industry and to help you understand this faster and 
and get to get get to the point. I would I would um, encourage you to ask those four questions that I have wrote down here um, about the you know when you think about your solution. Like clearly, the first and the main question is what is the problem that you are solving. Um, the second one, once you know what is the problem, then you would ask who has the problem. Because you know the patients, for example, and the HCPs, like they might have completely, they will have completely different uh, different problems. Then the third one is who is using your solution, because this is also something that could be completely different. And the fourth one is who is paying you. And of course, in most situations, you will have more more than more stakeholders than only one, and then those questions will have more answers. Or for each of the state, each of the stakeholder, there will be different. Uh, there will be different answers, and in that case, you will need. And this is where, from my perspective, really the complexity of healthcare comes. For each of the stakeholders, you will need to have different value propositions. Um, I heard, my, my, I think my manager mentioned it some some time ago. Think about usually, think about going to a restaurant. What you do? You come to a restaurant, you get a menu. You know, you you sell you 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 pick uh, you pick a meal, you eat it, you pay for it, you either like it, you either don't like it, and you leave, and everything is you. But imagine that there is someone who tells you, "Hey, Paula, go to this restaurant." Then in the restaurant, there is someone who tells you, "Hey, Paula, you need to eat like this pasta." Then there is someone else that pays for you. Then you eat it and and leave and the restaurant needs to make sure that all those people are happy so that the person who sent you to a restaurant is happy that the person who ordered the food is happy that you are happy of course and also the person the person or stakeholder who paid for the food is happy and this is very simplified healthcare you know when you think of when you think of some <clears throat> especially digital solutions in healthcare if it's not and now I'm not talking about, about the wellness apps or, or the simple apps. Usually a healthcare provider asks or recommends or, or tells a patient to use a certain, certain app or a certain solution. And sometimes they use it together. The patient uses it. Both are hoping and wishing that it improves the patient's life, that improves their condition. And then there is the insurance company paying for this. And you as a solution provider need to make sure that everybody is happy, that everybody understands the value that they will get from the solution uh, so that the payers are going to pay for it. The HCPs, for example, are going to recommend it to the patient and the patients are going to ultimately use it. Um, here I will pause for a for a bit because when I when I prepared the slides, like you know, like it looked quite easy, but now that I talked about it, it sounds like it could be you know like quite complex and a little overwhelming. So I will let you you know digest this for ten or twenty seconds before I move on because uh, I will start talking about the value proposition canvas. But now, if you have any questions or anything was not clear, now is a really good question, good time to ask. And please don't be shy. I really love questions, especially the ones that challenge me. We actually have already have uh, two questions in the chat. Ah, okay. So I missed them. Okay. <laughs> um, so the first one, when the user is different in two products that we provide, on which uh, do we focus on? Uh, could you could you please un clarify what do you mean? Maybe so like you mean that you have two different products and each of the products has different users? Maybe if you could unmute yourself. Hello, Milan. It's Ariana speaking from from Body Voice. Man. Um Hi. I brought that question, and particularly uh, we have uh, an issue when we 
present the the user the payers uh, and all this information to investors for example because mm -hmm. um we created a, a platform that can uh, identify diseases at early stage and monitor mm -hmm. health status remotely through voice and mm -hmm. uh, to this platform we develop a first product that is covid-19 early detection and then uh, on this platform we are adding also for example another product on uh, copd monitoring and our issue is that um, when we address these questions, we have very different answers um, from our first product and our second product. Uh, for example, when we talk about who is the user, um, in mm -hmm. this COVID-19 early detection, we think about a healthy people, a healthy person, not, not even a patient, because mm -hmm. he's about to discover that he has COVID-19, and maybe he doesn't have. Well, if we move for a second product, instead is is a patient, is a patient that has COPD. So it's a patient that normally is very sick, has different needs. And so our issue is this, like, how do we address I when see. we speak, for example, to an investors um, that, uh, for example, this morning we had a call with an investor and they asked, so who are your patients? Mm -hmm. And um, yeah, this is my question. Yeah, that's no, that's that's a very good question, and I will answer it only briefly, and then let's take this also into the mentoring session, and then we can we can talk about it into into more details because this could easily go like for ten or ten or twenty minutes uh, discussion, but you know, in general, to me, this sounds like you know, like you have actually three products. One product is platform, and then you said that on those on on this platform you have two different products. So platform is one, and then one product is second, and one product is third. And based on how you very, very briefly described it, it to me, it looks like it's quite disconnected that one is COPD, one is uh, COVID-19. Uh, so I would I would consider focusing only only on one and maybe on either on the on the platform and presenting it in a way that, you know, like there is a platform where we could attach or build more products on it based on where what we identify and that you are now identifying the right customer or the right condition that you want to address but as i said let's let's take it to our to the mentoring session and there also uh i will need to understand this a little a little more and i um so that i can give you better answer than this very generic one thank you milan mm -hmm, sure uh, okay, so from Romit, how many one quick question? Do insurance companies pay for services directly or hospital buy and an insurance reimburses them? That would change the selling funnel, right? Uh, this is a great question. And to me, so I do not know the European market that well. I know the, the US market a little better from this perspective. Um, and maybe it depends also on on the country, but I think that in in Europe, uh, that in Europe it's mostly it's mostly the the insurance companies who pay, who are the ones who pay money directly to you. In the US, it could be also that the hospital or a doctor pays you, and then they uh, request reimbursement from the from the insurance company. Uh, thank you, Milan. Um, so that's exactly the same problem we are also facing, trying to determine uh, how is the cash journey happening because accordingly your uh, business strategy uh, gets uh, influenced, right? And it probably mm -hmm. depends market by market, but uh, probably I'll take this up more with you in the one-on-one -on -one session. Yeah, um, let's, let's do it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, let's do it there because it, it could be very, very market specific. Yes. Uh, okay, one, okay one, one more question and then please... The questions that you that I will not have time to answer, I will either try to answer it in the end of the session, or if you do not have time, please take those questions to the one-on-one -on -one sessions, and we can discuss them there. Because I actually I'm super happy that I see that I see the, so many questions. Uh, okay, so the last one was from Seppo, I think, or like the next one. Uh, conflicting motives for different players, like in US-based healthcare, the fee-for-service model does not reward the preventive care exactly. HTP might get more money from accurate, from acute ER visits than from good quality home care that keeps patients from coming to the emergency. Yes, exactly. So this was actually not a question, but rather a statement. Uh, yeah, this is so true. And this is why, for example, the uh, the payers are trying to 
you know, to step in because often the payers are, are the ones who pay at least part uh, of those ER, of those emergency rooms uh, room visits. Um, okay, let's continue. And I mean, we will have a question. We'll, well, the questions will be still in chat. So if there is more time, I will get back to them. The next one would be from Kirill. Then. And if not Kirill, please let's uh, please take it to the to the one-on-one -on -one session. The, sorry, Milan. Uh, there is actually mm -hmm. one question that could be uh, as a bridge to the next topic. Uh, so if there are several from Kirill in the chat. Uh, okay. Mm -hmm. If there are several value propositions for different uh, combinations of stakeholders, so should there be a uh, different or several also value proposition canvas or that would, as he mentions here, or that would be very excessive? Yeah, Paula, thank, yeah, thanks for pointing it out. And Kirill, this is a very good question because actually the first thing I was going to, I was going to say is uh, that I very, very strongly recommend to build value, one value proposition canvas per stakeholder, because it would be completely different. You know, if you, if you try to com combine uh, if, uh, patients and insurance companies into one stakeholder, because it would, it would end up being a mess. So definitely I do recommend doing a value proposition canvas for each of the stakeholders. Having said that though, you know, in the first, step you know also with the value proposition canvas is like the level of detail where you could go is different and i always you know i i always recommend to, to to do also the for example like not only build solutions in iterations but also do value proposition canvases or like any other work in iteration so so do so do not try to or do not focus on having the ideal value proposition canvas and identifying everything perfectly at, at the first go, but rather, you know, do a high level one that usually also triggers, you know, some, some thinking you would have to digest it and then get back to it uh, later if you see that you need to, that uh, you need more information. So this, so it's also something that can be done in iterations. Uh, but yes, great question. And with this, as Paola, as you mentioned, uh, we can bridge to, to the value proposition canvas. And that is really a very good tool. Uh, it was created by a company called uh, Strategizer. And especially, you know, and they have a lot of really very, very good tools on design thinking. They created also the business model canvas and many, and many, many other. Uh, they wrote also a few quite interesting books on uh, with an ideas on validate with thoughts or ways to validate ideas and, ma and many others so definitely if this is the stage where you are at i i, I recommend to check at what this company has has to offer um and you know and the, with the value proposition canvas i will walk you through it and here i'm not reinventing the wheel uh you know this is the information that you could also find you know find elsewhere if you want to read more in, you know into more details of course uh, the goal that I have or that we have also with with Paul and Civita is to walk you through to quickly explain you what is here and then do the exercise in the end uh, where you will build uh, value proposition canvases for some not for your product but for some very well known product so so that you will not have to so that you will not get the bias of working on something uh, on, on your own thing. Um, and from my perspective, the most important thing about the value proposition, about the value proposition canvas is that you, it helps you build the solutions, not that your customers like, but the ones that they will buy. And this is a massive, massive difference. Uh, this was also the case that we had with Mentigram that Almost everybody liked our solution, but in the beginning, no, almost no one wanted to buy it. And health and in healthcare, this is even stronger because I cannot imagine that someone, for example, who wants to do like an early COVID uh, uh, prevention or uh, or something, that people would say, "Yeah, I, I don't like it. It's you know, it's, it, it's not good." Uh, so that's 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 very important. 
this has like the value proposition canvas has two parts. The first one on the right hand side, the circle is the customer profile. And then the square, it's the value proposition itself. And each of them has three parts that, uh, that I will go through quickly. Uh, and I see that we will actually have only 10 minutes before we should start. So I will, I will speed up a little because here's mostly a lot of examples. Uh, so jobs to be done. These are the jobs to be done to include all, all, all jobs, all tasks that your customer needs to achieve. If I think in the examples of a COVID vaccination center, you know, it's the work what they do for their customers, for example, give people vaccination, but it's also the problems that they are solving internally or the internal activities such as storing vaccines, scheduling the appointments uh, and stuff. So really the tasks that need to be, that need to be done. The pains part is everything that complicates or prevents the customers from completing the jobs to be done that you have identified. Of course, some pains are more severe, some are some are less. For example, the vaccines won't arrive on time to the to the vaccination center. Uh, people who, are, who aren't scheduled come for an appointment anyway. People are not on time for the appointment. This is everything that complicates delivering or like doing the task. When it comes to the gains, uh, it, they are not the opposite of the pains. Instead, gains is rather something that improves the, the customer's feeling or how they think about these solutions. Uh, I would say it in a way that the pains, addressing the pains is something that is a must have for the customers, while addressing the gains is rather nice to have. So I would always, you know, if I was not sure, I would always prefer, prefer focusing first on the pains and only then on the gains. You know, um, for example, gain could be that yes, I do not want to deal with nervous people. I want to have people who are, who are really you know, like nice, nice who come here. I want to vaccinate as many people as possible and so on. So, and when you have put those three things together, so jobs to be done, pains and gains, this helps you define the customer profile. And now Kirill, back to your question, you see that if you do this, if you combine this, for example, for the patients and, and the insurance companies, it's really not possible because when you put all the pains, it would not be clear whether it's for the patient or whether it's for, for the insurance company. Um, when we go to the, to the left part, which is the value proposition, uh, the first one is the pain relievers. And that's everything that you and your, your solution can do to reduce the impact of the pains that already that you have identified that you have listed in the pains uh, section. So for example, a, in this case of a COVID vaccination center, uh, you could let people set up a vaccine, uh, an appointment for an exact time, or you know remind the people that, hey, don't forget your appointment is tomorrow at two or something like this. Uh, the gain creators, similarly to the pain uh, relievers, is what your solution can do to address the gains that you have identified. So you see that there is a very, very nice connection between pains and pain relievers and gains and gain creators. Like if you build it in a way that there is disconnect between them, then you should go back to, to the value pro, to, to the value proposition canvas because then there is a misalignment between you know between the value proposition that you're having and the problems that you have identified with with the customers and the last part all this work will will translate and link to the products and services that you build to help your customers get their jobs done um, and again they do not have to address all the pain relievers or the gain creators. But rather what I would do is that I would focus really either on the most severe pains because they are really, you know, like something is really, really hurting, like you want to remove it fast or something that it's really a very, very big additional value or is super easy for you to do. So for example, build an online tool for scheduling the appointments, build a reminder service to remind the people about, about their upcoming uh, vaccination. Um, since this is the picture again. And here you see how it really, it's really very, very well connected, uh, connected together. Now, validation is something that's super tricky. 
and especially especially for the first time founders because it's because you can get a lot of media coverage you know uh you can be accepted to a startup accelerator like this one uh when you talk to the to your target audience or potential customers they usually in healthcare like people like the solution you can win startup pitch contest you can even get an investor however is this validation for me this is a, this is a fake validation because this does not validate the the product this is a recognition that you get uh you know getting media coverage is not a validation of a product because media rather write something that is interesting to read uh those of course i'm not saying that they are bad not at all all of those are really important and helpful achievements that you you know on you know on your journey and from my perspective it's rather uh rather important milestones you know for example for you getting accepted into covid x accelerator it's not a validation of your product but it's a very very important milestone on your journey that helps you build a solution and get a real validation which for me for is simply the business for the simple solutions it's either user growth or revenue or put, uh, and for the complex solutions it's you it's for me moving through the sales funnel because of course you will not get five customers who pay 50 euros per month subscription but rather there, there is a more complex sales funnel that could look like for example meeting with a gatekeeper meeting with a decision maker then some layer of intent of purchasing your solution contracting and signed contract and moving through the funnel like each step provides additional validation with of course a signed contract uh, as the ultimate goal where you where you want to get and okay it was pretty quick let's see how how you understood it paula do we have do we have any more questions or not really um i don't no. see any okay cool so it means that now uh there is a link to mirror board and there we would like each of you to create a value proposition canvas for one of those four products pick the one that you want um i we we try to combine it in a way that hopefully each of you knows really well at least one of those it's airpods nespresso crocs and tinder um work in the teams as you know like within your within your companies to create the value proposition canvas for those for for one of those four products let's use around seven seven minutes for it and then two teams and here i'm hoping that the, the that you will volunteer will present their work but uh for a few minutes and then also we'll we'll uh, we'll discuss it for a few, a few minutes and please focus on a high level value proposition canvas and rather fill all the six fields with a, two or three items then do really a deep dive into for into customer profile and not having enough time for the for the value proposition uh with that i will let you let you start i think paula you can now do the magic and send the people to the to, to the breakout rooms and um, if you have yeah. any questions we'll be able to support of course Okay, so did you have enough time? I think for quick reflections, um, uh, I can see that you have had some time to think about the value propositions. Um, yeah, I I see that a lot of has happened in the in the mirror boards, which is which is exciting. Um, who would like to go first and show explain there uh what i propose is that i will keep sharing my screen and i will zoom into the team that will go through 
For, for which product? Whoever wants to, whoever wants to go first and has a full value proposition canvas done, you know, for one of those products, please go ahead. I see, for example, that uh, Care for COVID, do you guys okay. have a pretty nice for an espresso? So maybe could you go? Okay, I can make a try. So I'll start with a customer who is uh, a business professional who, who wants a morning strong espresso. In the evening, he takes a decaf uh, as a daily, let's say, jobs. Uh, and uh, he cares about he, the gains that he has is when he has speed in this process, when he can have an Italian flavor in, uh, in his or her coffee. Uh, and uh, the ability to get some decaf as well, but also to offer different variations uh, to friends. Now, the pain is that normally with uh, with a normal espresso machine, uh, that's a dirty process. Dirty. Mm -hmm. You understand what I mean with dirty? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, an unstable espresso coffee in terms of flavor. Uh, one coffee type at a time. Uh, it's a complicated process for somebody who is not a barista. Mm -hmm. uh, and the good machines uh, cost a lot. Now, uh, we have espresso that comes with an espresso machine and then espresso pods as a product. And uh, the game creators is that you can just do things in 10 to, 10 to 20 seconds. You can also have many variations of coffee, even decaf pods at the same time. Uh, and as pain relievers, you, have, you don't need to have any barista skills. No need to clean up every time the machine. Mm -hmm. uh, you just need to do three, there are three steps, not actions, three steps to unneeded or even less. Uh, and the machines are inexpensive. The pods are expensive. Mm -hmm. uh, great job. Great job. I have only one, one, one comment uh, that I would, or that I would, that I would add for, for the customer jobs. Uh, I would go there maybe a, a, even though i said like uh, even though i mentioned high level for me high level would still be going a little deeper for example the customer job is not only to drink the coffee or have the coffee but for example buy the coffee make a yes. coffee you know so 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 the so so the tasks that are required to be able to drink uh the coffee or to have to have the coffee i think other than that you could easily, or we could easily use it as a sample proposition, value proposition canvas for, for everybody else. Uh, thank you very much. Welcome. Anyone else? Well, actually we finished it for Didi Rehab and the AirPods. Well, we, it's not as pretty as the previous one, <laughs> but maybe, maybe we can start talking. Okay. Let's yeah, did, do it. We... did the rehab, did the rehab. Uh, did the rehab, all right. Yeah, we did it for the AirPods. Oops, okay, so. Maybe, maybe it's not perfect, but we can start talking about it. Okay. So, uh, as um, talking about uh, AirPods, we um, evaluated that customer jobs, uh, all the things that the customer need to do with uh, something like headphones, or something similar. So like uh, things related to um, work in this period, mostly that are like meeting, work meetings mm -hmm. and like Zoom meetings, but also things that are not related to works like uh, calls with parents and the other people and listening to music. Mm -hmm. Then we envision as uh, pains, the problem related to the cables that are mostly the, the, the parts that get the most uh, damaged, uh, mm -hmm. like when they are ruined or they tangle and they get ruined after that. And uh, if there are no cables, uh, there's a problem of uh, the battery uh, duration uh, for the cable as a headphone, for example. So they need to be uh, charged, for example. Uh, in terms of gains, uh, we envision like the the need of uh, freedom of movement for the for the user uh, in order mm -hmm. to uh, use it in different kind of uh, environments, uh, work uh, like bicycling, uh, walking, uh, and so on. And uh, the 
duration of battery and the wearability. And in order to, uh, to address these uh, this, uh, customer jobs and these uh, pains and gains, uh, we proposed uh, the, the AirPods as uh, cableless headphones uh, with a case integrated battery charger. Uh, so uh, this solution uh, is, a, is a pain reliever because uh, there are no cables and there is mm -hmm. a case with a, with a battery loader inside. And at the same time, in terms of gain, the, the case is small, so you can have it in the pocket. Uh, not having uh, cables make you uh, free of move, gives you the freedom of movement, and uh, not having cables make it uh, more strong for uh, in terms of uh, um, addressing stresses of usability. In this sense, I don't know if uh, mm -hmm. I used the proper uh, wording <laughs> for the last part, but uh, this is it. Mm -hmm. uh Thank you, thank you. Very, very good, very good job as well. Um, similar, similar to to the previous, like to, to the customer jobs. I would add like one more, like one level, maybe a little deeper. That you know, like that your job, for example, is to uh, take the the headphones with you, connect them. But this is, but maybe like my also my direction, as I said, you you both like it, it's a very very high level. So so probably my, my direction also was not super cool, but in general, like, as well, like very good one. So you, uh, you rather go more in details? Yeah, so in, in, in customer jobs, I would go because when, you know, because when, when I think about the, you know, that I need to do meetings, calls and music, uh, a ruined cable or, or a tangled ta cable is not a direct pain for listening to music, for example. It's a pain of having a, having a headphones with, with a cable. You know, so so that's so so that's what I would change there. But I mean, other other than that, and especially considering that you had like five five or seven minutes, very 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 good job, and I'm a little a uh, little perfectionist uh, there. Okay, thank you. Uh, thank you very much. Thank you very much. Um, okay, I see that the time is up. Uh, Paula, what should we do next? Are there or Everybody, if you could say, if you have one or two more questions about the value proposition canvas, especially because we did not uh, do any questions there, please go ahead and ask. Uh, if not, we will make the slides available for you somehow. Hey, and I, then... I have a question. Yes, go ahead. Uh, <clears throat> uh, with example, with uh, 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 I have a proposition for Nespresso. I have a problem to identify uh, which are the gains and which are the problems. Because if we are talking about Nespresso, for me, the problem is uh, to get, uh, get coffee when I want it. And uh, uh, should it be a gain if I can get this uh, coffee when I want it? Or is it really pain? Uh, that's a very good question. And you know, also like when I saw the value proposition canvas for me, it was not fully like clear, like, you know, like how to identify what is a pain and what is a gain. And, you know, and also it, it depends on, on the people because, but you know, if you said it like you want, actually, you know, maybe what I would do like that your customer job to be done is drink coffee whenever I want it. So that would be actually a customer job. Then. And then if you are not able to do it for for whatever the reason is, then it would be a pain. This is one this is one way of how you could how you could potentially look at it. Uh, if you if 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 you know if having coffee whenever you want it is is a must for you. However, if you like drinking coffee, and it would be really nice to have it whenever you want, but it's not kind of like it's not a, you don't feel that it's a must but it's rather a nice to have thing then you put it as a game you know so even so with so with this question and it was a very good question because it actually links to the fact that you know like things like value proposition canvas it's not or anything like it's not like physics you know or chemistry where or like mathematics that one plus one is always two you know that every question or everything leads to always the same things because you you have to consider 
how the people are feeling about certain things. That what is a problem for one is maybe, or what is a master for one person could be a nice to have for someone else. Okay. Now I see you are, you. A little you, you are a little confused, so I'm not sure whether I... Whether <laughs> no, no, I, whether you I, have explained very well. Uh, now I got it. So okay, if, I, uh, if I am a coffee addict, it's a uh, pain. If I just a uh, coffee lover, it's a uh, gain. Possibly, but you know, but but rather the, the important thing is that you know, in, on in the right hand side, the gains are not already the solutions for the pains. Like think of pains as something that is a must have for you or for the customer. A gains, rather something that's nice to have. Like this is something that could help you identify what is a pain and what is a gain. And then pain relievers is what relieves from the paints, so what addresses the must-haves, and the gain creators is what addresses the gains. So the nice to have. Yeah, okay, thank you. Mm -hmm. Thank you for the question. Any more questions? In La Milan, I also have a question. So mm -hmm. do you suggest to start from the right to then go to the left? Maybe you already said it, but I missed this part. Uh, no, I was that's, confused that's on where to start, basically. Uh, so yeah, my apologies because I did not say I, uh, you need to start on the right hand side. So you need to start. I I assume that if that you know creating the order of the slides, starting with the right hand side and then going to the left, that uh, that you would approach it like that. But yes, you are right. Uh, you need to start with the right uh, hand side. So f because when you start, first you need to under understand the customer and what the customer needs to achieve. The, those are the customer jobs. And then when you know what are their jobs based on those you can identify the pains and gains and only when you know what are the pains and gains only then you can know or think about what are the pain relievers and what are what are the gain creators and how your products addresses those okay so you uh, an arabic uh, person probably from, uh, <laughs> from so it's from right to left i understand correctly now so yes Yes, okay. like, yes, like this is from right to left, yes. Okay, and I was confusing because normally you start from the left and it didn't make yes. sense. Okay, and then mm -hmm. just a quick question over the question that was previously asked. Mm -hmm. If I, because I also had the question just to understand if I understood right. So a pain is a must have, while a gain is a good to have. Because in, in what, in the, in the value proposition that I did, in the end I had gains and then pains were similar to gains just in the opposite side so i was confused about that as well yes that's a very good question and to me this is probably this is probably like the only confusing thing about the value proposition canvas that understanding the difference between the pains and the gains and how how to work with them and what i used to do you know and, and saying that pains are must-haves and gains are nice to have is something that I I do to to simplify it, to 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 get an understanding, you know. However, you know, there is, for example, if you have only pains and pain relievers and no gains and no gain creators, it's still okay. You don't have to find, you know, at all costs also gains and gain creators, for example. Or also the array, also the other way around. But pains are to me, you know, like the the pain part is more important than the gains part. Thank you. And sorry, sorry, only last question. And this is for the end user or for the pay, customer payer? So you should do this for every stakeholder. Ah, for because, every stakeholder. Because every stakeholder, for every stakeholder, you will have a different value proposition. So for example, you know, if you have a solution that the patients use, but the insurance companies pay for it, uh, the value proposition canvas for the for the patient will be completely different because because for the patient you need to understand what pains do the patients have, what the patients need to achieve, and how you can address this need. And it's usually you know like how to get healthier. But for the for the insurance company, their jobs to be done are completely different. Like the the pains that they are having are completely different. So ultimately, with this solution. You will have to do to the almost like almost two different sales processes. Like the first one is to sell a solution to the to to the payer to to ensure that you know that you get money for it, that you get paid for it. 
and then also to sell or market the solution to the users. Of course, it, this could happen with the help of the insurance company and ensure that the solution is working well enough for the for those for the patients so that they use it and that it delivers the results that you promised to the insurance company thank you it was very clear mm -hmm. thank you okay i think that's it Yes, we, we have one last question, I think, okay. from Ronald in the chat. Okay, let me... So, okay, uh, from the pricing point of view, the gains can be the ones that help to create the letter for the product pricing, right? Uh, um, Ronald, from my perspective, both yes and no, because also, uh, yes, because of course the gains could be gains are additional features, additional value that could uh, that could let you sell like a bigger or more ex more expensive package to, to the customer. However, you can you could do the same also with the pains. That for example, the very basic part of a solution is addressing the most severe pain. So like really the the, the biggest the biggest pain that the, the customer have has then you, you will have a tier that addresses additional pains. Then you have a tier that addresses also some gains. So we can really, you can really work with those. Okay, thank you. I think that mm -hmm. was uh, the last question. Uh, yeah, thanks so much, Milan, for this uh, very interactive uh, session. Uh, and although we had some uh, minor issues, but the technical issues, I hope uh, you still uh, gained a lot from the session and uh, even more from uh, individual sessions with Milan uh, that are uh, coming next. So yeah, thanks again, Milan, and uh, all of you who joined and please, uh, remember to, to rate this webinar and give your feedback. I have uh, uh, typed in uh, the link in, in this chat. So that's the last thing uh, we will request from you today. So thank you all. Thank you. Uh, thank you everybody. Uh, Paolo, <laughs> thank you for having me. And I'm looking forward to meeting you all in the in the one-on-one -on -one sessions. Bye. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you. Bye. 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 Bye.